good evening everybody uh, in this lecture i will show you one of the important consequence of uh, cannot uh, cycle uh, to begin with i will take two reversible adiabatics like that you know this is one reversible adiabatic and i i have another reversible adiabatic process something like that you know i name it as a to b this is the process, reversible adiabatic, and uh, another process, reversible adiabatic process, which is uh, C to B, something like that. And now, I join these two processes by a reversible isothermal curve, you know, AC. This is a reversible isothermal curve. So what happens is uh, I add heat, I add heat, there and an I and of reversible isothermal heat addition Q and and of supply. Uh, this is everything is in a coordinate space, uh, that is what is PV diagram. This is in a PV diagram. This is in PV diagram. Oh, uh, is this possible? Let me tell you that the reversible adiabatics, the you know, uh, a uh, curves A, B, and uh, C, C, B are constituting a process, uh, and along with A, C, totally this comes as a site, thermodynamic site. And if you observe this, this cycle is, is uh, having one heat source. There is no heat sink. Such process is not possible. That's what Kelvin Planck statement says. Such cycle cannot exist. That means the important conclusion that we can draw out of that is these two reversible, I can write there, two Reversible adiabatics cannot cross. No, they can't. They can't cross. I mean, at an angle, they can't. They they should have an equal slope, and that they should be parallel to each other, or somewhere like that. They can't cross. So this is the takeaway. This is the important takeaway from this, you know, ideal uh, concept that we have started with. Now, taking this into consideration, let us analyze, you know, another process which I will be, you know, telling you that if there is a process which may be something like this, you know, a random process in a PV diagram, it's a PV diagram. Okay, there is a random process, and the process is uh, is I, I I name it as A B. No, I name it as A B is a process, and this process uh, any under this process. For example, if I'm adding heat to the, uh, during this process, what is uh, what is what, what is the area under the curve PV diagram? It's naturally work done. So if I keep the work done same. Let us say, I want to keep the work done same. I would like to replace this process by some process like reversible adiabatics and reversible isothermal. What shall I do? I can replace that, keeping the area under the curve same. I have a, a reversible adiabatic line, another reversible adiabatic line. You know that they can't you know, have the equal slope, the slope, they have, different, you know, uh, they can't have, you know, different slopes and ca can interact, uh, intersect. They have to have, uh, you know, go par parallel. And I replace this uh, heat addition by something like an isothermal curve like that. You know? Now this A1 to B, if I number it so now what what is that we have we have a new curve 
uh, we, uh, uh, a new process for that matter. It is starting with A, 1, 2, B. And this A to 1 to B is, uh, is having two reversible adiabatics and isothermal heat addition. Isothermal heat addition. So, the re heat addition process AB, the green curve that you see, is replaced now with, uh, you know, you know, this uh, violet uh, colored uh, process, which is thermal, isothermal process. So, what I have is the heat supplied, because reversible adiabatics will not permit the heat exchange. So, the area, uh, I mean, heat addition during AB, you know, that is a process, a process that we know. And heat addition, if you take, Q during AB should be equal Q during A1 to B. Agreed? That's, that's what it means, because a one, a A1 and 2B are reversible adiabatics, so no heat exchange possible, so it must be something like that. If taking this into, you know, uh, how did we get there to this point? For the simple reason, adiabatic to reversible adiabatic cannot cross, and hence they have to have, you know, equal slopes, and they have to have a parallelity, and if we have something like a process where we can replace that with two reversible adiabatics and uh, one isothermal process. And with that, we can infer that the heat addition during uh, a process, random process AB, is going to be same as uh, heat addition during A1 to B. If you take this, and if we want to analyze uh, a cyclic process, a cyclic process, I will take a cyclic process there, This is a cyclic process. A cyclic process need, need not have, you know, beginning or you know, ending. So it's a cyclic process. This cyclic process, uh, let me tell you that this can be decomposed or we can make partition of this cycle into, you know, elemental Carnot cycles. How is that possible? All reversible adiabatic lines and uh, we can have you know, reversible isothermal curves. Reversible isothermal curves like that. So these are the elemental Carnot cycles. Hope you, you are following them. So then a cyclic process, what is indicated there, is now, you know, divided into elemental uh, Carnot cycles. And this, you know, once we divide like that, we have something like that, and a conclusion can be drawn. What is that? Heat addition and heat rejection uh, at two different temperatures. I mean, heat addition, I, uh, I consider this to be dq at t1. Let's say I take this one cycle, which is, uh, you know, I consider randomly this one cycle. Okay? And if I consider that cycle, what happens if you see dq by t1 is heat addition should be equal to dq by T2, DQ2 two by T2. But we know that heat rejection is, uh, is a negative. I mean, heat addition is positive. Heat rejection is negative. So we, if you take the sign convention into consideration, DQ1 by T1 plus DQ2 by T2 plus so on, because there are a number of cycles. 
turn off cycles should be equal to zero. And an important conclusion that we can draw is cyclic integral where we add up all, all Carnot cycles of dq by t if a reversible cycle it is should be zero. This is what the most important conclusion which we call as Clausius theorem. We call that as Clausius theorem.